of the fighters, Chavez won the vacant WBC Super Featherweight title back in September of 84, stopping Mario Martinez. In the eighth round, this after Hector Camacho refused to fight a mandatory defense. And there is Julio Cesar Chavez, who has defended his title three times this past year, stopping Ruben Castillo in six, Roger Mayweather in two and one by decision over Dwight Pratchett. The introduction of Chavez who began his career as a bantamweight but developed into a featherweight and eventually a super featherweight. In fact, he is thinking of moving up to the lightweight division of the future. With his punch, he can well do it. And the introduction of Rocky Lockridge. Both of these fighters have been known to be slow starters. The one exception in the career of Lockridge was that quickie knockout of Mayweather. So it'll be interesting to see how they go at each other in these uh, opening moments. Well, Rocky has announced he wants to play right off the bat hard poker here because he feels in his corner is the fact that the Mexican Chavez does not start in a hurry. So he is going to start in a hurry. And the introduction of Prince Rainier receiving a standing ovation from the crowd. And we should mention a very responsive crowd. They rarely boo, although French tennis star Yannick Noah was greeted with whistles, which uh, is a boo in this uh, part of the world. Yannick Noah has uh, since made his home in the New York City area. Perhaps they are taking that personally. I think that has something to do with it. How do they treat him in New York? Well, he says he enjoys New York because people don't recognize him as readily as they did in France. <laughs> That's a man that has something to hide. All right, the referee, Tony Perez, bringing the fighters together. Scoring is on the 10-point must system. Handled by three judges, Pito Ferrari from Italy, Miguel Donate from Puerto Rico, and John Desfart from Belgium. There is a mandatory eight count. No three knockdown rule. The bell does not save the fighter except in the final round, and the ringside physician can stop the bout. As you saw, Chavez weighed in at 130 pounds, Lockridge at 129. It is scheduled for 12 for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship. And that is the official ringside clock on the lower portion of your screen. Rocky has not come out with the zeal and banging ability that he talked about. He's throwing soft punches for some reason. He is not uh, whipping in very hard shots. For his part, the champion Chavez is just taking his time as he usually does in the first round. Chavez is known as an action boxer. The average Chavez fight has lasted less than four rounds. An exciting boxer, although he has been a, a dark secret uh, to sports fans, other than he's a countryman from Mexico and boxing fans in Los Angeles who have seen him from time to time. Well, there's no secret that he can bang. That he can do. Right now, the big mystery is why Rocky has elected not to throw hard punches, but sort of half-speed punches. Almost as if he's too tentative, too cautious, expecting a counterpunch, and not therefore committing himself fully to it with his power. Yeah. <laughs> 
Lancing right hand by Chavez that got in. As we approach a minute left in this first round, it's scheduled for 12. Bring him up, bring him up, bring him up. Good right hand thrown by Chavez, and that was thrown with power, and it landed right on the jaw of Rocky Lockridge. Coming up on 20 seconds to go in this first round. Rocky building up points, but inflicting no damage with those tentative blows of his. That's a source of amazement right now that he's not punching hard. Final seconds, opening round. Thank you. Back in front teeth and hello, Rocky Lockridge. Except to come out, this is round two. What does the fight doctor's scorecard tell us for the opening round? In the opening round, I felt Rocky Lockridge took the round on uh, aggressiveness and more punches. There was only one really good punch landed by Chavez. It was a beauty, but you can't give him a whole round on one punch. I mentioned earlier, this is usually a very quiet crowd here at Monte Carlo. You are hearing the staccato voices of the uh, French blow-by-blow -blow television in the background. And of course, beyond them, the staccato voice of Lou Duba, who keeps an incessant chatter going at Rocky. Lockridge, who still is punching with uh, half speed. Julio Cesar Chavez, the WBC super featherweight champion out of Mexico, defending his title against the former champ, Rocky Lockridge. Lock and Chavez getting in on Lockridge. It could well be that that um, lesson learned with stamina has resulted in a cautious style in the first few rounds for Rocky Lockridge as he conserves his energy and then comes on. He's winning that first round. This time, Chavez fighting much harder and much more active fight. And with the television lights uh, overhead, it is a very hot ring that uh, Chavez and uh, Lockridge are battling in. Chavez means business with that right hand. He throws a very hard right hand. That right hand was right on target, followed by the left by Chavez. Landing here in the second round. and they're causing more damage than Rocky Lockridge's. <laughs> nice combination by Lockridge. Down to 30 seconds to go, second round. Final seconds of the round. And a big one for the champion, Julio Cesar Chavez. The champion, Julio Cesar Chavez. Record of 47 and 1, 40 by knockout, although the uh, promoters of Chavez insist that he is undefeated, but NBC Sports discovered a defeat that uh, he suffered back in 1981, a first round disqualification against one Miguel Ruiz in Mexico, and that has been confirmed by the Mexican Commission, although Chavez's people uh, say it is not so. Actually, Chavez has had some bizarre fights 
on his record. Uh, there's one he won by disqualification back in 82 because his opponent deliberately spit out his mouthpiece. His opponent, a fellow by the name of Jerry Lewis, not the comedian. Well, he's taking his corner's advice between rounds. The corner said, step up the action, zing in the punches, and when I yell Chavez at you, it means jab. A little bit of uh, confusion there so Rocky won't know when he's going to jab. Lockridge is punching a little bit harder than he has the first two rounds. He certainly blew the second. Bennett gone by. Third round. Lockridge looking to do it off the spin of the blue corner. And Chavez right back going to the body. That right hand of Chavez is finding pay dirt. It'll be a miracle if Rocky Lockridge can stand that for 12 rounds. The uppercut of Chavez very effective. Chavez is doing a beautiful job of going under and over, under and over. He's got a complete arsenal and he doesn't neglect any punch. Coming up on 30 seconds remaining in this third round, we are live on DC Sports World from Monte Carlo, where it is just past 11.15 in the evening. And the fight doctor, Freddy Pacheco. This for the WBC Super Featherweight Crown. Good combinations by Lockridge to conclude round three. And this is round four. Repairs to the right eyelid of the champion Julio Cesar Chavez between rounds. Now Chavez reportedly underwent delicate surgery on that eyelid from a cut sustained from a bunt in a fight last December. Well, it's starting to bleed now, and that's bad news for him because it's in a dangerous position on the eyelid. Those are the ones that stop fights. How did you score that last round? The last round was Chavez because of the meaningful punches and the damage inflicted. He is now ahead unofficially 29-28 is Julio Chavez the champion. <laughs> From the corner of Lockridge, Lou Duva and George Benton screaming, stay closer, get closer. Again, that good right hand of Chavez fighting pay dirt on Lockridge. And as I said the round before, I don't know how he can take that for all 12 because they are landing flush and with a lot of steam on it. Chavez boxing very intelligently. Rocky Lockwich is trying to get in, outscore him by throwing three, four, five sort of meaningless punches, but Chavez giving ground and coming back with hard shots. And we're coming up on a minute left in this fourth round. Come on, 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 come on,
doesn't seem to quit coming and doesn't seem to quit landing on Rocky Rock. Breathing hard from the mouth now, even though it's just the fourth round. And we're coming to the end of the fourth round. We'll be back right after these words. The corner of Julio Cesar Chavez. Julio, the fourth of ten children, the son of a railroad laborer. As a youngster, he was more interested in playing soccer. Turned out to boxing by his brothers, Rodolfo and Rafael. His boxing hero, one of Mexico's top super bantamweights, Juan Antonio Lopez, who has been working the corner of Julio Chavez. This is round five. Chavez wearing white with green and red trim, the colors of Mexico. Rocky Lockridge in the maroon with gold trim. And his advertising is in danger of coming off. Those uh, match stickers are coming off the front of his trucks. I wonder if that's a first in championship competition. Rocky getting a little desperate in his punches. Whereas Lockridge was content to try a workmanlike job to slow down Chavez, trying to catch him in the, on the ropes and in the corners and working on him. He is now sort of coming after him with a little bit more desperation as these rounds start to fly away. the jab and they're screaming from this corner double up on it Lockridge doing much better than he's done in the previous three rounds he stepped up the action he's almost got it into me or you kind of confrontation and we're halfway through this fifth round Scheduled for 12 for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship. Rocky Lockridge, the one-time WBA Junior Lightweight Champion, which in effect is the same as Super Featherweight. Almost through the fifth round and still no clinches and still no need for Tony Harris doing his usual excellent job of staying out of the way. Let these two guys go at it. His 53rd championship bout, and he has handled uh, many fights before involving both Lockridge and Chavez. The step up in speed of Rocky Lockridge has caused uh, Chavez not to fight as hard, and therefore Rocky is winning this round. <laughs> Out of 15 seconds remaining in round five. Sharp body blows landed by Lockridge as the round concludes. Well, there is satisfaction in the corner of Rocky Lockridge, who had a good fifth round. He did. They were telling him he's getting stronger, and that uh, apparently it was their game plan to go easy in those first rounds. Uh, the babble in that corner made the uh, Mormon Tabernacle Glee Club sound quiet as both Lou Duva and Benton escalated their conversation. This is round six. We are live from Monte Carlo on NBC Sports World. It is coming up on 11.30 in the evening. Here are the Principality of Monaco, Mar Albert with a regular on the French Riviera circuit, the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. And this for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship. Julio 
Carlos Cesar Chavez defending his crown against the former champ, Rocky Lockridge. Lockridge has a little blood coming out of the cut of his mouth. Chavez has a mouse coming up under one eye and a cut on the eyelid of the other, which has, as far as this has gone, has been no significance. Okay, Rick, step back in. Rocky Lockridge comes in with a record of 38 and 4, 32 by knockout. The four losses, one to Alfredo Gomez of that uh, controversial decision, and then the two heartbreaking losses to Eusebio Pedroza, and he was knocked out of the second round by Juan Caporte. And Chavez getting the left hand in. Chavez stepping up the action himself as he found himself outclassed in that last round. But he's back again this round. Beautiful left hook by Chavez. Rocky in trouble. Rocky Lockridge is in trouble. The short left hand and then the left hook. And now following up with the right hand and an uppercut. Rocky Lockridge, he hung in close. He spooled Chavez past the uh, danger point, and they're back to zero. Chavez landing bombs. We're down to 35 seconds remaining in the sixth round. Chavez is a cool customer in this ring. He senses he's got Lockridge in trouble, but he's taking his time. Nice combination by Lockridge. And this is round seven as Julio Cesar Chavez trots out to meet up with uh, Rocky Lockridge. And apparently uh, Chavez lost uh, one of the match signs from his uh, trunks. He sold his trunks for commercial purposes. Match is a French news magazine. They lost three of them. Rocky launched an attack and uh, Match lost three. I wonder if they get a make good on that. <laughs> it goes to show you how corners differ in their interpretations. While Rocky almost went bye-bye in that last round, Lou Duva said he has blown his boat, meaning uh, Chavez. He's tired now, and now's when you can get to him. Yes, it is all point of view. Lockridge did have a solid fifth round, but Chavez back in the sixth, landing some hard shots uh, to the body. Chavez won the vacant WBC Super Featherweight title back in September of 84, successfully defended that crown three times last year, stopping Ruben Castillo, Roger Mayweather, Mayweather going in two, and Chavez won by decision over Dwight Pratchett. Lockridge won the title back in February of 84 when he knocked out Roger Mayweather in the first round. That's their only common opponent. Referee Tony Perez breaking the fighters. Just under a minute to go in the seventh round. And here at Monte Carlo, the timekeeper is stopping the clock every time the uh, referee breaks the fighters, so uh, the rounds are going seconds longer. <laughs> Left hook by Lockridge, and a right by Chavez. Okay, break. 
Good hook by Rocky Lockridge, but that doesn't neutralize those tremendous right hands. They're landing on the part of Chavez. Ooh, right hand by Lockridge. That was on target. Final second, seventh round. Let's take a look at that right hand that's controlling this fight, and it's actually dominating Rocky Lockridge. There it is, sharp, accurate, and right to the point of the jaw. And we move on to the eighth round. It's scheduled for 12 for the WBC Super Featherweight Crown. Julio Cesar Chavez in the white with green and red trim. The colors of Mexico going up against the one-time champion, Rocky Lockridge, in the maroon with gold trim. <laughs> What does the fight doctor scorecard tell us? I have Chavez unofficially ahead 68 to 65, and you're keeping rounds 5 to 2. Some of those very close because Rocky Lockridge is doing most of the fighting and the chasing, but the punches of Chavez are so accurate and so well placed, and they do so much damage that you have to shade those to Chavez. <laughs> We are a minute in, round eight. Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, live from Monte Carlo. Lockridge's punches, which don't have a lot of steam, are hitting mostly arms, elbows, and gloves of Chavez. of the fight for Rocky Lockridge, a crisp one-two. In addition to being a awesome puncher, Chavez moves beautifully. of combinations with just under a minute remaining in this eighth round. Both men giving as good as they get, but it's Rocky out speeding two or three punches to one in those exchanges. And right about now, you have to begin to consider the effect of uh, stamina. We touched on that earlier concerning Rocky Lockridge, who ran out of gas against Wilfredo Gomez, and uh, Julio Cesar Chavez has not had to uh, go that many rounds. Most of his fights have gone four or under. Final seconds. Out and you're punching up, you're looking beautiful out there. You're hurting this guy. You're hurting him a little bit. Come on, nice deep breath. Come on, breathe in deep. 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 Breathe in deep.
took a shot on the chin from Chavez. Nice uppercut. Chavez has gone 12 rounds once. He's gone 10 twice. Chavez looks fresh as a daisy. It's uh, Rocky Lockridge who has to suck it up. He's looked in several rounds very weary. I've been working with the conditioning expert Tim Hallmark in an effort to uh, ward off the stamina problems. gone by, ninth round, it's scheduled for 12. Oh, Rocky Lockridge has had a long, hard, and honorable career, and he's he's had some big battles, and they start to show up along about now. Chavez with the uppercut, he felt he could connect on Lockridge with that uppercut. That was his game plan going in. something to his liking because he's thrown a lot of uppercuts most of them landing on uh, Rocky Lockridge who didn't cover up as he usually does Chavez sharp shooting again another sharp round so far for Julio Chavez Coming up on a minute to go in this ninth round. Wonder how many lead uppercuts you've ever seen anyone throw in one round. This guy doesn't do anything but throw. There's another one. A lead uppercut. They must have seen something in the corner and said just go uppercut crazy. And now in addition to the three other match signs, the last one shows signs of coming up to the The talk that you have been seeing on the screen has been a couple of seconds off because in situations like that, with Tony Perez breaking the fighters, uh, here in Monte Carlo, they are stopping the clock. So the official time here the mark as compared to what you are seeing on the screen. Most unusual to stop to stop the clock when the, the referee breaks the fighters. We're coming up now to the end of the ninth round. Marv Albert of the Fight Doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, back in Monte Carlo. This is round 10, scheduled for 12. Julian Cesar Chavez defending his WBC Super Featherweight title against Rocky Lockridge. Scoring is on the 10-point must system. It's handled by three judges, Pino Ferrari out of Italy, Miguel Donate from Puerto Rico, and John Desmart from Belgium. Well, one thing is for certain, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez is a failure in terms of his commercial enterprises. He lost his fourth sign for the French magazine match that had been pasted on his uh, trunks, and it was uh, picked up by the referee, Tony Perez. As a signboard, he doesn't rate very high, but as a champion right now, he is rating 100 because he's doing a job on Rocky Lockridge, who is coming down to the last three rounds. If he ever hopes to win this championship, he must knock out Julio Chavez. What do you have it on the 87 to 84 with Julio Chavez in front. But the difference of these two fighters right now is one worn out fighter trying to make do what he can against a relatively fresh champion who's having a good time. Landing what he wants. He had the problem earlier with the uh, blood over the eyelid, but that was early in the bout, and no further damage done. Rocky's mouth is rather cut up. He's been bleeding from the mouth, and they've been taking care of it between rounds. Those are those uppercuts, which have been landing with brutal regularity. And there's the uppercut again. Rock 
from the corner, Rocky Lockridge. Less than a minute to go in this 10th round. Well, it was great talk in Rocky's corner and from Rocky Lockridge himself that he wants to go out on a shield if he's going to go out. He doesn't want to go with decision, by a decision. So, therefore, it means that the last two rounds should be fireworks if he's got it in him because he can't win otherwise. And this is round 11. And Julio Cesar Chavez looking very fresh. He does look like he's having a wonderful time. He looks fresh. He's landing those crisp punches of his, but they've sent Rocky out to do these last six minutes as hard as his body, tired as it is, can't do it. Chavez, incidentally, has never been down. Never got to the canvas. Lockridge has been down twice. He was knocked out by Juan Laporte. And Cornelius Boza Edwards put him down, a fight that was won by Lockridge. In fact, that was his first outing of the junior lightweight division, a, a memorable one, scoring a unanimous 10-round decision over the uh, former world champion Boza Edwards back in September of 80. Lockridge had been fighting as a featherweight since turning pro back in 1978. Well, thus far, this fight has gone a long way to prove that Rocky Lockridge has a chin because Chavez, who can really bomb with the best, has landed wonderful right hands and a number of uppercuts without damage. Shotting with that right hand. And he never neglects somebody. When that's open, count on a big punch from Chavez to just lift you off the canvas. Lockridge has gone past the 10th round six times and has got three up and three down in that uh, department. Chavez has gone past 10 only once, and he won a 12-round decision. That was a uh, title defense against White Pratchett. Screaming from the corner of Lockridge. Suck it up, Rocky. Rocky's got it. Lockridge has a big heart. He's throwing everything he has at, as this round comes to an end, but it's not moving Chavez. And we're coming to the end of round 11. Got a race in the world. Body, arms, body, hit him anywhere, but you know, just keep moving your hands, you know what I'm saying? Move them fast, move them slow, move, you know how to do it, boom, 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 but hit him in arms, body, 
Instructions 12th and final round. Julio Cesar Chavez defending his WBC Super Featherweight title. And at least on the fight, Dr. Scorecard is well in front. Well in front, unofficially, 106 to 104. I did not hear Benton or Duba send him out to do or die. I didn't hear one of those you need a knockout to win kind of uh, exhortations. They both said just keep working, keep throwing punches. This is our fight. Scoring on the 10-point must system handled by three judges, one from Italy, one from Puerto Rico, and one from Belgium. The right hand by Lockridge. And left by Lockridge. And a right by Lockridge. Now Lockridge was throwing with everything he's got. That was a good earlier left hand and a superb right hand. Chavez trying to answer with the hook. A minute gone by in this final round. You can't substitute for youth. That freshness, those reflexes, Chavez is showing the difference between youth and age in the ring. up on the halfway mark, 12th and final round. WBC Super Featherweight title. Chavez has never pressed for a knockout yet in this entire fight has he gone after a knockout. Satisfied to do his work, he has not gone into the killer punches that he usually has. Now the crowd responding to the finish. Closing in on 30 seconds to go on the bout. taking a shellacking here just to land one punch. He's getting hit seven, eight, nine punches just to land one hard one. Now the crowd rooting for the champion, Chavez. As we come down to ten seconds, remaining of the bout. Final seconds. Right after these messages. Back in Monte Carlo and awaiting the decision. Waiting for the ring announcer, John Rene Godard. For the WBC Super Featherweight Championship. Monsieur Ferrari, Italy. Julio Cesar Chavez, 116. Rocky Lockridge, 116. Monsieur Desmet, Belgique. Julio Cesar Chavez, 116. Rocky Lockridge, 116. Monsieur Donati, Puerto Rico. Julio Cesar Chavez, 116. Rocky Lockridge, 113. Chavez has won by decision. We are trying to get the interpretation of the score, which we will pass on in just a moment. And the fight doctor gets
getting set to uh, chat with the champion who has successfully uh, defended his title. And let's go to the ring. I asked him if that was the toughest fight. He said, yes, this has been the toughest fight of his career. Y los coches que le dices, no creías que lo podías noquear. No, sí podía, pero, pero sinceramente para esta pelea no me preparé como debía ser porque me decían que sí peleaba y que no peleaba y en fin. I asked him whether he was punching for a knockout. He said, no, I did not prepare myself as well as I should because the fight was on and then it was off and he wasn't sure of his punches. Usted quiere subir a la próxima peso, a los lightweights. Sí, esa es la meta mía, ser campeón mundial ligero. Yo estoy seguro que en peso ligero subo más fuerte y más rápido. Sinceramente, ya me cuesta trabajo para su pluma. I asked him if he's going up to the lightweights. He said, yes, he wants to go up to the lightweights. He feels he'll be stronger, he'll be faster. He cannot keep this weight for much longer. Yo, yo para esta pelea hice un, un esfuerzo sobre, sobre humano porque me preparé nada más 22 días. He only prepared 22 days for this fight. ¿Él te lastimó algún tiempo? No, nunca me lastimó, sino que me, me lastimé la mano y me, no podía golpearlo con su vida. He never hurt me in this fight, he said. Rocky landed good punches, but never hurt. He hurt his hand on the, on the right knuckle as he showed us, but he said Rocky was a difficult fight. And uh, thank you very much. Back to Marv Albert at ringside. All right, Ferdy, and here. Lockwood, did you think that was your fight? Yeah, I thought uh, I had edged him out, uh, Ferdy. Uh, he's a very courageous champion. But even though uh, giving myself, giving him the benefit of the doubt, uh, I thought I edged him out. Did he hurt you at any time? There was one place where he looked like your eyes did a number and your legs did a number and you came back valiantly. He stunned me, uh, uh, believe it or not, uh, Freddy, uh, Freddy uh, twice. He stunned me two times. But the conditioning that I was in, I was able to withstand the, the stun. The stun. At the beginning, it didn't look like you punched with that fierceness that we've seen with you. You looked like you took it easy to start stepping up the speed of the punches. Well, well, I did, Freddy, uh, quite obviously. It was going to take me two to three rounds to get fired up and get going and fill him out early going to get my stuff going. Did you pace yourself so that your stamina would last throughout the full 12 rounds? No, I, I actually didn't pace myself at all. I just wanted to get that momentum going. Uh, not that I needed to pace myself. I just waited. I was waiting for the momentum to get going. All right. What's in the future for Rocky? Do you fold it up now or do you continue to try it? No, I'm going to keep trying, Ferdy. Uh, I still feel it's rightfully mine. And until I get what I feel is rightfully mine, I'll keep trying. I'll keep working.